Hello again everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John and as always thank you so much for being here. Good topic? Let's do it. What's the scariest sound you've heard at 2am? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. When camping, a massive pine tree came down and landed about 20 feet from the tent that we were sleeping in. Some poor porcupine was sleeping in it and rode it all the way down, screeching this unholy scream the whole way down. It sounded like a human toddler. One night I slept in the living room. It was completely dark and just me awake, everyone else in their rooms. I heard a creak as if someone sat in the far corner where the coffee table was. This corner was the far side of the living room where no one can access unless they walked over me. And I had the bright idea to see if it's a paranormal thing. I thought to myself, clap if you're here, and heard the most crisp one-clap noise in the same corner of the room. Bruh, I ran so fast to turn the lights on. Don't think I've ever slept in the dark since. Not me, but my friend that stayed at my house years ago claims she heard someone run up the outdoor stairs, knock on the door, then run down and run up the indoor stairs and knock on the door several times. It would be impossible to run up both sets of stairs in such a short time frame, but she claimed it happened and refused to sleep at my house again. Woke up from my bed going side to side creaking, the door banging on the wall repeatedly. My parents coming into my room yelling, telling me to get out of the house. There was an earthquake going on, a very, very big one. I woke up to the sound of scampering raccoon-like creatures inside my room zooming about the night before Christmas. It then bounced on my bed, jumped off, and ran out raccoon-sized. I followed it, and it was laying on the couch and barked at me adorably. Apparently, my parents got my sister a puppy, and it had escaped during the night because it was lonely. They had it in an uncovered puppy kennel in the living room, and he climbed out. The interesting thing is, he didn't like my older sister, and instead clung to me, and became my dog when she moved out and couldn't take him. Best friend to this day. I love me a good story that has a happy ending in this segment. I mean, maybe not for your older sibling, but sounds like a good pup. I woke up after getting tapped on my shoulder blade. I kept still, and a couple of minutes later it happened again. I turned around to see what it was, super scared, and this time it tapped my face. I realized there was a lime green alien flying around my room. I screamed the loudest I've ever screamed, then everyone in the household came in to see me screaming at a half deflated birthday balloon that was going around in circles upside down from the ceiling fan. A chunk of ice falling into the blower fan of my window air conditioner, which was right by my head. It sounded like a gunshot went off by my ear, and I also got sprayed by a fine mist. I thought for certain that someone had broken, shot my wife, and I was being sprayed with her blood. It's not like a weird noise or scream or something you would assume people would answer that question, but one that stuck with me was hearing a helicopter flying relatively low and stationary for like two minutes over the street behind my house. My room is on the back side of my house. I would say it was maybe 20 meters from it, making a huge noise for like two or three minutes before going away. Not only waking up to that was scary, not knowing what it was at first, so sudden and loud, but the next day, I tried to look up if something happened near my house, but couldn't find anything. I did go look what it was at the time. Looked like a police helicopter, but I live in the countryside, small village, so that was really out of the ordinary. Not finding anything about the event was scary too, because I couldn't stop wondering what or who they were looking for and if it was dangerous. My house was raided by the police early in the morning. I was all alone. Husband was off working at sea and I hear a pounding on the door. I look out the window to see so many cop cars. I went to answer but asked to see ID and they started yelling to open the door. They stormed the house and checked everywhere. They had a dog, and the dog kept threatening my little dog. I was trying to hold my dog and hold my robe closed at the same time. Turns out, my husband's nephew, who stayed with us for a month, was wanted for something. 
I used to live near a major road that didn't allow trucks. During the day, it would be full of traffic and noisy, but at night, sweet silence. One night, I was deeply asleep. I awoke, heart pounding, to a single loud whirring sound. It was someone in their expensive sports car going at least 120 miles per hour. Scared the shit out of me. In college, I woke up to my glass closet doors violently shaking in my apartment. I 100% thought someone was in the closet. My roommate was working a night shift on campus and wasn't there, so I was alone. I basically sat in silent terror for an hour until I got enough courage to get up and go check. Nothing was there, and I convinced myself that I had a weird nightmare. That morning, I got up and was reading the news and saw that there was an earthquake. I realized that is what I heard, and it made much more sense. I went to college on the east coast of the US, so it was really strange to have an earthquake. Even if it is something like an earthquake, which is totally understandable and explainable, when you are awoken by something like that, it's really unnerving. I was a police officer, sorry about that, Australian NSW, and country service. This was from the 1990s. A body had been located in the hills with a bunch of stab wounds, a young bloke. It turned out to be a bizarre self-mutilation suicide rather than a murder but I didn't know that originally. The body was outside a small fibro hippie shack and it was in dense bushland. Because of the isolation, the body was left in situ with an overnight guard, me, and the forensic team and detectives would attend early the next morning. It was only a delay of four to five hours to get sunlight and an undisturbed daylight crime scene. So I was left there for the night by myself in a vehicle, Toyota Land Cruiser. I'm not one to spook easily, so I set the car up in the driveway and made myself comfortable. Passenger seat all the way back, door open, and feet through the open window of the front door. And soon enough, I went to sleep. And I dreamt the murderer was coming through the bush to come back and get me as well. I snapped awake. After a few deep breaths, I could still hear the murderer coming through the lantana, scratching and snapping twigs. I near shit myself. I scrabbled around and grabbed my gun belt, I had taken it off, and torch, and got ready for whatever was about to happen. I took a couple of steps and shone the torch into the lantana, only to see a sizable wallaby, who was just as surprised as I was. He effed off up the driveway, and I sat there shaking until the sun came up. Oh boy, do I have a story. My sister and I slept in the same room when we lived in our grandparents' house. We both always fought over the top bunk bed that was pushed up against the wall, not too far from the bedroom door. But looking back, it did seem like a massive room. Well, the door was shut tight that night while the toys scattered all over the floor due to how lazy my sister and I were as kids, always being yelled at to clean up our room. We had one window that we kept covered because I love the dark and I still sleep in the dark to this day. Then, because we snuck out the window twice in our young lives, that window ended up getting bolted shut. Well, my sister had a nightlight after this event. It had to be around 2, close to 3 in the morning. I had the bottom bunk while my sister had the top. She won the battle between who got the top bunk, and our family settled it with one to get the top one week while the other had got it the other week. All four of them were annoyed by our constant fighting over the top bunk. I was in somewhat of a deep sleep while she whispered my name over and over. Me being a light sleeper, I woke up grouchy, asking what she wanted. The tone in her voice made me pull my covers over my head as she asked me, Do you see that in the corner? I said no, and she begins freaking out as she describes to me that a tall dark figure wearing a hat stood in the corner. Now she's creeping me the F out. I ask her what it's doing, and with that, I regretted asking. It's just making noises and standing there. Now I pulled my covers over my head fully as she began freaking out even more. It began walking towards her, and with that, she lost it, yelling for our father as she screamed and cried out. The bedroom door opened as the light to the living room showed nothing but toys in the bunk bed. I took a peek to see what was going on, only to see my sister climbing down the bunk bed really quickly and out the door. 
ignoring the fact that she ran all over Legos and dolls that her and I left on the floor. Her crying out in the living room while my father shut the door, leaving me all alone in the dark. My father left me all alone in the dark with a figure in the corner that I couldn't see. Before we moved, she requested the bottom of the bunk from now on. I lived in a countryish area years ago, was on my front porch with headphones on listening to music and smoking a blunt. All of a sudden, I hear a faint noise over my music that sounds like a crying child. I pull the headphones off and it's gone, put my headphones back on and a few minutes later it's happening again. Something pulled headphones off and it's gone, except this time I keep the headphones off. A few minutes later. I hear what I can only describe as a mix of a child crying and the witch from Left for Dead coming from a cow pasture with no houses near it. I nope the F out and go back inside and lock the house like it's in effing Fort Knox. Ask my parents later and my dad pulls up a YouTube video of fox noises and sure enough, it was a spot on. Still scared the F out of me in that moment though. Didn't hear it but felt it. Felt like a hand running down the side of my body like in a sexual way. Went from my side boob area to the top of my thighs. My husband was asleep and I felt the hand going down the side of my body that I was laying on. It absolutely defied the laws of rationality on so many levels. It 100% felt like a hand. I could feel the different fingers, especially the thumb. My first rational thought was that maybe a very large rat had gotten inside the mattress and rubbed it against me. I woke my husband up and had him help me search the mattress, but there were no holes at all. I guess some rats have pretty big hands. And uh, yeah, didn't find anything. When my wife and I were first married, we lived in an apartment building with many other couples in the same demographic. Our upstairs neighbors were a bit off, slightly reclusive, but polite enough and no noise to complain about. About four to five months into our time there, I'm awakened by a guttural yell, followed by a thud and a loud scream of, Oh God, no! My wife calls 911, and I go to investigate, get up there to see the wife crying and going into hysterics. The husband has a shocked look on his face holding a baseball bat. On the floor is their neighbor out cold. Apparently, the neighbor was really drunk and mistook their door for his. He was fumbling at the door so long that they thought he was a burglar. The husband grabbed the bat and the wife opened the door. The husband was the one who yelled as he swung the bat blindly, absolutely brained the neighbor. The wife screamed when she recognized the neighbor. I administered some first aid until the police and later ambulance arrived, answered a few questions, and went back to bed in a fruitless attempt to salvage a few hours of sleep. Not that scary, I guess, but when I was five or six, my parents left me alone and said they would be back in a second. I don't know why they left, but after a couple of hours, I started to get scared. So I rolled up in my bed with my blanket covering everything. In like five to seven minutes, I heard two knocks. I ran with excitement to open the door, but right before I heard this inhuman scream, it was so loud I started shaking and couldn't do anything. I then slowly went to my bed and curled up again. I had no idea what it was, and at the time I thought my parents were killed. I couldn't sleep the entire night. I got up when it was morning and went to the kitchen. Both of my parents were there. They said they came home a little late and saw me in my bed and didn't want to wake me up. Nobody mentioned about the scream. I still don't know what happened and it's been a little mystery, but I try not to think about it much. Literally a few days ago. I heard my back door opening, then my front door. They're both very loud. It's a bit of an old house, so you know when they're opened, especially if it's the middle of the night, dead silent. I ran to grab the scissors from my desk and then quickly wedged my door shut with a chest of drawers and a 
hid in the corner of the room with my dog, crying silently. I didn't hear any footsteps at all, but I knew I hadn't just misheard bolt doors opening loudly, and there have been a string of robberies and home invasions near my house semi-recently, so I knew what was happening. Well, I must have fallen asleep at some point, because I woke up at around 6 a.m., before both my parents woke up, so nobody has been awake in the house or messed with anything. I was so scared to go look to open the door, but it was beginning to be light, so I knew I had to go see what happened. Front door was wide open. Back door was opened, and the garage door that you need to open to get to the back door was open, and yet not a single thing was taken, and nobody was hurt. I still have no idea what happened or why the doors would either be needing a key or to break them open. They can't just open with the wind, and the garage door also cannot just open with the wind. You nearly need to force it open. Since that's happened, I've been so scared to sleep as I still have no idea what happened.